Good morning. So schizophrenia is a chronic multifactorial disease. Uh, we believe that genes and environmental factors play a role, um, biasing the brain towards abnormal development and abnormal circuitry and synchrony. Imaging studies have shown structural, functional, and molecular abnormalities, some evidence for abnormalities in glutamate, but mostly um, overwhelming evidence for abnormal dopamine transmission, where um, the findings indicate excess in striatal dopamine and deficit not only in cortical dopamine, but in all extra striatal uh, regions. This kind of uh, information about the molecular alterations in the brains and patients with schizophrenia can lead to development of new therapeutics. So some implications for the findings are the fact that the prefrontal cortex has a deficit in dopaminergic tone, which leads to understimulation of the D1 receptors, which basically uh, would lead to abnormal uh, cognitive functions, especially the cognitive functions that we know depend on optimal stimulation of D1 receptors, such as working memory and executive functions. Hello, my name is Dr. Oliver Howes, and I'm a psychiatrist in London. And I wanted to talk about the problems we have with our current antipsychotic treatments. So we've currently got more than 20 different antipsychotics licensed and available in the clinic. So you would think we've got plenty of choice and lots to offer our patients. However, in reality, we know that about a third of patients are treatment resistant to our current drugs. And we know that two thirds to three quarters find them difficult to take long term and actually stop them over the long term because of side effects or problems with the, the lack of efficacy. So actually, what really transpires is that we've got lots of choice, but little that we can really offer our, our patients if they don't get better and tolerate that first drug. And the reason for this is because all our current drugs, with the possible exception of clozapine, essentially work in the same way. They're all D2 dopamine receptor blockers. And this actually not only means that we don't have choice in terms of mechanism of action, but it also is, is linked to some of the side effects that our patients find so difficult to cope with, particularly in the long term. So side effects like Parkinsonism, tardive dyskinesia, akathisia, hyperprolactinemia, these are all linked to the dopamine receptor blockade and hard to avoid. With, with our current treatments. This, I think, highlights the need that we have for, for new uh, and alternative approaches to treating schizophrenia, approaches that will offer us a different mechanism of action, but also a different side effect profile that will be better tolerated for our patients. Because even on top of the dopamine receptor side effects that we get with our drugs that we've got at the moment, another big problem we have is, is metabolic side effects. And these are major causes of, of uh, tolerability issues for patients, but also risks for, for their long-term health as well. So we really need alternatives to our current strategy of D2 blockade. Seventy years after the serendipitous discovery of clopromazine as the first treatment for psychosis, we are finally at a situation where four different mechanisms of action, four different me medications are being pursued for the treatment of schizophrenia. Three of them have one phase 2b study that is positive. They only require one additional study for us to be able to use this kind of medication as a novel non-postsynaptic dopamine D2 receptor blocking agent that can help patients with schizophrenia. It is exciting that each of those medications has very little side effects. Since it's not a postsynaptic D2 blocker, there is no side effect in terms of Parkinsonism, akathisia, and prolactin elevation. There's also no relevant weight gain that is greater than placebo or cardiometabolic risk that has been identified so far. Which are these four medications? First, there is a TAR1 agonist, a trace amine associated receptor agonist, Eulotarond. And the name Eulotarond 
already tells you that the WHO has recognized that this is a new class of medication. TAR1 receptors are intracellular. They're interesting because they can dimerize, hug with the D2 receptor and it's internalized. And there's also a reduction in D2 and dopamine firing presynaptic. This may become the first presynaptic treatment for schizophrenia. Then we have two muscarinic agents, zanomelin, an M1, M4 muscarinic agonist that is coupled with a non-centrally active anticholinergic trospium chloride, neutralizing some of the peripheral side effects that have stalled the development and further development of zanomelin for the treatment of schizophrenia. And then there is also CVL231, an M4 positive allosteric modulator that increases the um, muscarinic M4 firing in a different way and downstream leads like zanomelin to a reduction in dopamine output. And then finally, there's pimavanserin, already approved for the treatment of Parkinson's psychosis, which is currently under development as an augmentation treatment for patients with predominant negative symptoms. And again, had also one positive study. 